This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. It, it, it's a lot bigger than it looks here. It's larger than a pinhole, but they've circled the hole in the tire. This would be the right rear, quite possibly the reason that he brushed the wall a little bit. Kyle frustrated because he doesn't have a very forgiving car. He can't make mistakes or take a hit. He's running about six tenths of a second slower than the leader, Jeannie. It was at that 17, slid right up under the back of the 10 car. You misjudge a little bit. Guy gets in the gas, gets out of the gas. You're right behind him. Trouble. Oh, big wreck. Whoa. Biffle. Greg Biffle in the 16 car. That was right in front of those boys right there. And how many times this year have we seen this? Greg Biffle dominant and ends up with a huge problem. Second caution of the day comes out at lap 83 for Greg Biffle, who is very dominant early. And now it looks like his race is done. See if we can see what happened. Right in the middle of your screen. Here it comes. Ooh, he got turned on the straightaway. Yes, he did. Ooh. That was Kurt Busch in the two Kurt car Bush, behind him. I believe Kurt Busch may have lifted him up. Just what we were talking about on the pit road entrance here a minute ago with Kenson. Jeff Gordon started 11th. He has slowly faded back to 13th. His car is his teammate, the 25. Brian Vickers is slowing on the racetrack. Jeff says the car is just so incredibly loose off the corner. He loses so much time through the center, and then he just loses even more time on the corner. Brian Vickers dropped to the apron right in turn yeah. one. And guys, it looks like an engine problem, and the 25 seems to be the Hendrick car that continues to have engine problems. Not, not on a regular basis, but this would be about the third or fourth problem. And I got to tell you, the 26 car, I've been there. I know what that feels like. Be out on the speedway this fast in a car you can't drive. And you've done every, oh, big crash, 18 down here in turn four. J.J. Yaley right between turn three and four, pounds the wall, puts us under caution for the fifth time today at lap 190. Hard hit. Oh, yeah, it's got it around backwards and up into the fence. I didn't see if anything happened to it or not. He was running in the 10th position, Matt Yoakum. Steve Addington asked, JJ, what happened? He says, just got too loose on entry, and I couldn't save it. Had a great run going. He had slowly fitted back to 10th, but the car is still solid. Now they're day heading back to the garage. Look way on the right of your screen. Here he comes. You know, I think he did that same thing in the bush race yesterday. Kind of all by himself. Got, the car got really bad loose. And, and he spun out yesterday. Now look, three cars ahead. He said, whoa, dude. Crash, turn two, Ryan Newman. Wow. Oh, wow, that is huge. Get back to your story in a minute, Daryl, but this is the sixth caution of the day, and it comes out at lap 201. And Newman was still on the lead lap. And remember, he was one of those cars like Kyle Busch that had to come back to pit road before that we restarted the All race right, on the last off. caution. He's driving off, man. To fix the rocker skirt, so he was back in the pack. Matt Borland, the crew chief, tell his crew to pack it up for today. Yeah. Watching from Michael Waltrip. See if anything happens up here. This was the uh, incident that you were talking about, yeah, Darrell, with this, Junior this, and Jeff yeah, Green. Yeah, this is the Junior and Jeff Green battle here. <laughs> Newman sliding up. He was just in front of his teammate Kurt Busch, but didn't see what happened to first. Mark Martin keeps putting the pressure on Jimmy Johnson. And Mark Martin currently running seventh. And a caution has come out with some smoke here. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kyle Petty has lost an engine. And uh, just remember now, his really engines come from Everhands Motorsports, and they've had a lot of problems as of late. So uh, they headed straight to the garage with this car here. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. I tell you one thing, if that caution came in the, probably the nick of time for that nine was chasing the 99 down and he was going to take uh, first place here pretty quickly. And the luckiest man in Texas, point leader Jimmy Johnson. Remember Johnson made a green flag pit stop just before a caution came out and went two laps down. Now Johnson will be back on the lead lap. Yeah, he needs to make a little contribution to the Humane Society. 
24 car were looking at him right there. He had been on the lead lap all day long, had a flat tire several laps ago in the green, trying to fight to get one of his two lap hard way drive by the leader. That's going to be a tall order with Casey Kane in at nine, but he's not giving up. He's side by side, but Kane gets the good run off turn two. Gordon's really going to have to shove it hard into turn three and stay with him, and does. But here yeah. comes Honey Stewart in that 20 car fighting his way back. It looks like the groove has moved up. You can get the Oh, there we go. Trouble right there. Carl 99. Edwards. 99 got around back there. But Hang on, baby. I think the 24 is around. Big time. Hard crash for Carl Edwards at lap 257. Caution flag number eight. So much side by side by side racing. You just get the car on the outside of you and it just sucks you around. And it's almost like you see Gordon down on the inside. I think that one of I think 24 maybe gets no Ooh. Carl gets loose. That's what happened. Come down and the 24 was there. Boy, Tony Stewart I think Tony, just gets by. I don't know. You think Tony maybe got a piece of that? If he didn't, it was very close. He's got tires that obviously Clint doesn't, and he was closing in a hurry. And Riggs powers up into the seventh position. And it's about a second out in front of him to that 31 car of Jeff Burton. Jeff running in the sixth position right now with about three and a half laps to go. Jeremy Mayfield, the other Eminem car, goes to pit road as Kane comes by to take three to go. In his first Texas appearance, he finished second to Elliott Sadler after leading 148 laps. The 07 car just took off and, uh, you know, here's Mark Martin. We talk about him all the time, 500 milers. He's up there in ninth place. And Bobby Labonte, who's having a great run today, guys, right there behind him in the 10th place. 43 car, good run for these guys. It's gonna be a good points day for Mark. Well, he came in here second in the points. He's gonna gain a few on the 48, not many, but a few. Right now, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car in the 12th position. I've got to believe if they can close the deal here with two laps to go, they'll be very relieved to finish 12th because at one point, he was two laps down in this race. Yeah, he will leave here 12 points ahead of Matt Kenseth. If everything stays the same for about another lap and a half. Look at that. Is that guy, is he in any strain? White flag, one to go for Casey Look Kenneth. how relaxed he is in there. Look at his hands. They're not gripping the wheel. They're just holding the wheel. That car is on a rail, buddy. 26 years old tomorrow. Up, oh, little, little swerve there, little wave. All he needs to do is get through turn three and four one more time. And Casey Kane will become the second Dodge to win here. The first man to win from the front row, the 11th different winner at Texas, Casey Kane, wins the Samsung Radio Shack 500. Clint Boyer in the 07 crashes on the backstretch going off into turn three. Well, Larry, he was he was giving up spots in a hurry, and the car got really loose with him. He was falling back through the field pretty hard. And let's show you what happened to Clint Boyer on the last lap. Oh, he was trying, I think he may have been trying to block the five and they made contact. No, no, he got sideways and the five just had, to, had nowhere to go but to follow him. Five did a pretty darn good job of keeping from running into him. But definitely Clint got bad loose in the old yeah. yeah, I was watching, he was falling back pretty hard, pretty in a big hurry. Second win of 2006 for Casey Kane who with this same car won at Atlanta from the pole. Clint Boyer's climbed out of his car, he is okay. It's like a texas size burnout coming here. Let me tell you, one thing, I, if you blow up my motor, that's fine, but please don't tear up that race car. <laughs> oh no, no. Because Lowe's Motor Speedway is <laughs> yeah, coming. I got, a, I got a plan for that baby. <laughs> 11 races, 11 different winners at the Great American Speedway.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.